Kia ora. What are you doing here? You're just in time for a capital E science jam. Come on. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Professor Inventors. I've been feeling wonderful because I've had lots of letters from wonderful wanderers wondering things. Azaria sent me a letter because she wanted to know what I could tell her about magnets. I do own a couple of magnets, just a moment. These magnets all look a bit different, but mostly they're made out of iron, a type of metal. Each magnet has two ends that are opposite. The opposite ends go together perfectly well, but if you try to put two ends that are the same from two magnets onto each other, they can also push back. Magnets create a force, a force that I can't see. But, hopefully with a couple of experiments, we'll be able to see what the magnetic force looks like. Here I have a very special, quite strong and moderately dangerous magnet. I got it from Bunnings Warehouse, near the cabinets and door handles. It wasn't cheap. I'm going to show you how strong it is. Hold on, down here I've got some ordinary safeness. This magnet is so strong, it turns each of the safety pins into magnets too. So, I can actually make chains out of them, just by touching them on each other. Oh, it's quite good for cleaning up. The hard part is getting things off this magnet. It's like trying to shave off your moustache. It's difficult. The other thing I've learned about magnets that are very strong is the way they interact with different metals. Now, a magnet will attract itself to a piece of metal if it has iron in it. <laughs> but this pipe does not have any iron in it. So it does not get attracted to magnets. But there is something strange about this metal. It looks like a plain, brown, boring metal. But when you polish and wash it, it turns a beautiful, shiny pink colour. It's called copper, one of my favourite metals. While copper does not get attracted to magnets, it does have an ingredient that does. One of the ingredients in copper the electrons can be pushed by a magnet. If I drop my magnet through an ordinary pop, <gasps> get off, ah, yeah. get off my magnet. If I drop my magnet through this plastic pipe, it drops and falls with no resistance. <laughs> but a copper pipe is no ordinary pipe. When I drop my magnet through a copper pipe, Something wonderful happens. The magnet gets slower and slower as it falls. As it travels past the copper, it pushes all of those electrons down and down until they're all bunched up at one end. And they push back on the magnet, creating resistance and slowing it down. Once upon a time, a scientist called Michael Faraday found out that using electricity and metal wires you could create a magnetic force. I'm going to use his principles, his ideas, to create a little motor. First of all, I'm going to attach my magnet to this steel screw. It doesn't take any hard work because the screw's got some iron in it. Because the magnet is touching the screw, the screw has turned into a magnet itself. 
I'm going to put my magnet screw onto my battery. Now what I've got is like a sort of earring, I suppose. To complete my motor, I'm going to connect the bottom to the top and finish the circuit. Whoa! Another way to make a homopolar motor at home would be with this magnet and this battery and you put them on top of each other and make a very delicately shaped copper wire to connect the top to the bottom and finish the circuit. <laughs> Electricity going through wires can create a push or a pull. But what if we don't have any electricity? This is a torch, and there is no battery in the torch. Instead, there is a very strong magnet and a beautiful pink wire curled up into a pipe, a lot like the copper pipe I had before. As the magnet slides backwards and forwards through the copper pipe, it pushes electrons and creates electricity. I've turned on my torch and I'm sliding my magnet back and forward through the copper pipe. As I do this, the energy of that movement pushes electrons and creates electricity, which can make my light. I know what magnets can do, but I know what we all really want to know about magnets. What makes a magnet magnetic? What makes it push and pull? What is really happening inside it? And the answer to that, I'm sorry Azaria, the answer to that I don't know. What? 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 Did I just say that I do not know? Did I? The impressive inventor, professor, presenter, just admit that I do not have the answers? Well, yes, actually. I don't know much at all. But if you're a real brave scientist, then it's okay to say that you do not know. In fact, it's more than okay. It's important, imperative, essential to stop and say, I don't know much at all. I used to believe that no stone could float. It was a fact, and I was sure of it, until I met this stone. I used to believe that rice always sinks. And then I found out about rice bubbles. Tin foil is made of metal. Metal doesn't float. Except sometimes it does. And sometimes it doesn't. And then there's my little packet of tomato sauce, which always floats unless it gets a squeeze. This drink floats and that drink sinks. I really wonder and think if you would sink if you drank that drink. If you have a question, you should not be sad that you do not know the answer. If you are a scientist, and I think that you are, then give your question to another scientist. Take it like a special gift and gift it to them. A good question is delicious. A scientist 
will chew on it for a long time. They will think hard about it, sometimes over years, sometimes overnight. And if you're lucky, they will bring you back an answer. They will give it to you like a special gift. It will seem like all is well. You've got your answer. It will seem like a happy end. But a chat between scientists is far too wonderful to end like this. There is always an answer to an answer. If you, the scientist, are given a good question, you should take it like a gift. Bring it home. You should think about it, perhaps overnight, perhaps over years. And then, if you're lucky, you will think of an all new question. I've got so many questions inside me. I wonder what makes the grass green. I wonder what makes a rainbow. I wonder things I don't know. I don't know much at all. But I'm sure that when I wonder, it's a wonderful world. I don't know much at all. But I'm sure that when I wonder, it's a wonderful world. So if there's questions inside you, you wonder what makes the sky blue You wonder what is your belly button for Then why not wonder some more I don't know much at all But I'm sure that when I wonder it's a wonderful world I don't know much at all But I'm sure that when I wonder it's a wonderful world Kaki te ano. See you next time